In this video, we look at an op-amp circuit that performs integration, so its name is an integrator. And you can see what's unique and different about this op-amp circuit compared to the ones we've looked at already is that here in the feedback, instead of a resistor, we have a capacitor. Okay, so that's what um, gives this circuit the ability to integrate is the fact that there's a capacitor in the feedback, and you'll see why as we go through the analysis. So the non-inverting input is grounded. So just like before, um, when we've had the non-inverting input grounded, we can expect to see a phase shift of 180 between V out and V in. So we should expect a minus sign when we come up with our expression for V out. Um, you can see I call this node A, uh, where the feedback connects to the inverting input like we've done in previous videos. And we're gonna start with a KCL equation. at A. And also this notation up here means that we start with a capacitor that's initially uncharged. So to start with the capacitor has no stored energy. That's what the symbology here means that the voltage across the capacitor at t equal to zero is zero volts. So therefore no charge at t equal to zero. So our KCL is just that we have I flowing in Okay, um, IF is also flowing in, but I'm going to take it to the other side of the equal sign, so minus IF. And then little i here, again, that's part of the virtual short that we've talked about. That ideally is zero. Okay, now I'm going to take each one of these currents and write it in terms of voltage. So I here is VN minus VA, and we've seen this before where the other part of a virtual short in addition to the current being zero is that the voltage across the inputs is zero and since the non-inverting input is grounded uh, the inverting input is also grounded so uh, just like we've seen before VA is equal to ground here okay we've seen this before where the non-inverting -in input is grounded anytime that non-inverting input is grounded your node here that's connected to your inverting input is going to also be ground because of the fact the voltage across the input is ideally zero, like we said. So that means I is just Vn minus zero over R. Okay. Okay, now we get to IF. Um, IF, that's the capacitor current, right? The only component in our feedback here is a capacitor so the feedback current is just equal to the capacitor current and if you remember from your circuit theory class capacitor current is equal to capacitance times the rate of change across the plates of the capacitor like this so capacitor current is just c db c dt now, we want to get an expression for V out, so we have to get V out into this expression. And the way we do that is by looking at how our capacitor is connected. See, this side of the capacitor is node V out. This side of the capacitor is VA, which, as we said earlier, is the same as ground. So v out is the same as the voltage across the capacitor since v out is reference to ground just like any voltage at any node and since we only have a capacitor between v out and ground which is the same again as va well you see here in this circuit v out is just equal to vc so we can just substitute in here v out for vc okay and now once we solve for V out, you can see why this is called an integrator because you'll get a constant one over RC, right? When you bring the RC over here, but then you integrate both sides. All right, so you end up with the expression that the output voltage of this circuit is minus 1 over RC, the integration of the input voltage. So the output directly depends on the integration of what your input signal is. And then there's this constant here. So, you know, it's called an integrator because that's its unique feature. We haven't seen an op-amp circuit before this one that did integration. Uh, but you can also get 
gain out of this if you make this 1 over RC term greater than 1. And then the minus sign again is inversion, just like we've seen in other op-amp circuits where we get the minus sign at the output. So some of the things that you can do with an integrator. Okay, if you take a look at my slide here, um, if you put a square wave at the input of an integrator circuit, you'll get a sawtooth uh, triangular wave at the output. So as you know, the integration of a constant is a straight line. So you see here where we have a negative constant, we get a positive slope here, positive constant, negative slope. Uh, so you see that's the inversion that you're seeing. Um, if you put a sinusoid at the input of an integrator, you're going to get a sinusoid out, but it's going to be shifted 90 degrees. Okay, so for example, here you're putting in a sine and you're getting out cosine. Now you can also hook up an um, you can also hook up an op amp as a differentiator. And I'm not going to go through the analysis here in this video, but I would recommend on your own to do this to just swap these two components. Okay, just put the capacitor on the input of the op amp and put the resistor in the feedback and go through the same analysis and just prove to yourself that V out will equal uh, a constant. You'll also get a minus sign. Again, you'll get inversion. Um, but you'll get V out equal to minus a constant times the, dr uh, the differentiation, the derivative uh, of the input. So that can be a little work exercise uh, that you can do on your own.